Hello, this is Phil from Undercage.com and today we're going to take a look at CAT B15. So that's not a usual phone from the first glimpse at all. That's a very recognized phone, compatible with the uh, meeting the standards of the IP67 and the MilSpec 810G. So that's completely recognized phone for you. Let's see what it can do. So it's got a receiver on the top CAT logo, that's Caterpillar, and um, four inches of a WVGA resolution display. Yes, you heard it light, right, that's a four inch WVGA. That's the menu key, home key, and the back key as a soft key, uh, as a touch key. So on the right is a volume rocker with the shortcut key, and um, these screws can tell that it's a surely a ruggedized phone. On the top is a power key with the headphone jack covered in a flap so it can be waterproof. And on the left is a micro USB port, which is positioned a little bit left, far to left. So there are USB cables that just don't fit. And on the bottom is nothing. On the back is a camera with the Caterpillar logo. And you can slide this thingy to detach your battery cover, which gives you access to the replaceable 2000 milliamps of battery and the dual SIM card slot. On the top goes a SIM 1, bottom goes a SIM 2. And uh, beneath that battery is a micro SD card slot, so you can expand your storage, which is very lacking actually. You have to seal it tight. And powering it on gives you the usual lock screen. You can swipe and you can go to the home screen. This is almost as a stock Android, just like the, all the MediaTek processors uh, equipped smartphones are. And um, screen is. I should say it is pretty bad, um, not only with the resolution, but the color reproduction and the lightings are just bad. Let's take a look at the specs for the first time. It's got a MediaTek dual core processor, that's the MT6577, that's the A9 base, but surprisingly enough, it's really slow. Uh, mostly because it's got a half a gigabyte of RAM, and uh, I think that's a little too much. I wasn't expecting like a two gigs of RAM on this kind of devices, but you know, at least like a 768. But it's got a half a gigabyte of RAM, leaving you only 270 megabytes of this usual user, user uh, usable storage, and that's a little too much. And that 2,000 milliamps of battery doesn't do a good job. Um, really sorry to say all these things, but um, inside the software is nothing but a cheap MediaTek processor equipped phone. It's just covered in those hard shells, but its performance is pretty awful. Uh, ranking at this on 2.2, I'm not exactly a big fan of the benchmark scores, and um, but still, this does work as a reference. And the score ra uh, rates your 8200, and that's pretty bad. That's probably worse than most of the Snapdragon 200 equipped pros uh, smartphones in the market as well. And um, their first thing is, there are some problems. First thing is that its performance is terrible. When you launch a website, just like our own, you have to give it a lot of time. Give it time, give it some more. It's, in, it's not even on 3G, it's connected to Wi-Fi and still you have to give it some time. There we go. And second is that screen on that eight, uh, four inch display is almost not legible. Um, having a really hard time, uh, not only talk about the pixel density, but the display itself is really bad. And th third is that the sound quality, well, this receiver is pretty fine, but if you're trying to listen to any music or whatever, or if you're talking to the phone through the headphone connected, you can barely hear anything. This volume is so small. Uh, and all of these complaints could probably be fashioned to the claim that it's a ruggedized phone, it's an industrial phone, it's not for the normal usage. But come on, those are the things that ruggedized phones need the most. Considering where they're usually used at, uh, um, construction sites, outside usual, uh, usage, I don't know, just hardcore, I don't know, military, those kind of places. It's got to have a loud sound in the first place and it shouldn't bug you, at least on the performance. I'm not asking for assessing creed or anything. I'm just asking for the basic usages. And for those, it shouldn't bug you for lack of storage or lack of speed. And it's not even doing a good job on the battery either. That 2000 milliamps battery, I don't know why, but even without any usage, even the phone turned off. Uh, the screen turned off, it's still the battery bleeds and doesn't even last a day. And um, 
I was suspecting my apps. I install all the same apps for the same phones that I review, so it shouldn't be a matter, but I did uh, f uh, factory wipe it just to make sure, and it still leaked the battery. And I was suspecting that SIM card slot, maybe I have to put two in. I, so I put both in. I even put it in the airplane mode, and still the battery leaks on the factory reset to SIM airplane mode. So I should see that this was a phone problem. So with those things, this doesn't do anything that a ruggedized phone where, where those phones should be used that requires strong battery life, strong performance, solid performance, and the sound quality. This doesn't do any of the requirements. So I even ended up thinking that maybe the reason why this thing is ruggedized is so I can just throw it away when it does not perform as I want. It does survive. But what I expect from a rugged phone is a solid performance that I can share well from the construction size or those kind of loud environments that does me a job. And this B15 doesn't even do it. And if it's, it was selling for a cheaper price, I wouldn't mind it. But it's selling for about 400 bucks. That's, folks, not cheap at all. The Galaxy S5 is active is coming with the same mil spec capabilities. And that's is a bit pricey, but I'm hoping that's going to be better than this little guy over here that was totally disappointing so that was catb15 please do subscribe to under kg and the under kg view channel both of them and thank you all for watching we'll see you guys later bye